I'm very sorry that I can't be with you in Dublin today. It would have been a great opportunity to hear your views about the challenges ahead and what you're doing to improve your products and become more competitive. I know that you're facing change on many fronts. Digital technology isn't just opening up new opportunities for business. It's raising expectations among consumers that they'll get services that are more personal and better tailored to their needs. And the pace of change is itself a challenge on top of low interest rates and the new regulatory framework that flowed from the financial crisis. Getting the response right to these many challenges largely lies in your hands. My role is to try to get the regulatory framework right and here I'm clear that after the changes of recent years you now need a period of greater predictability. Businesses need certainty to be able to plan ahead. My goal is to open up markets for financial services and to increase competition and choice for consumers, which is one way, of course, of making sure that the interests of policyholders come first. I'm also keen to help European companies expand into other markets, which is why I'm pursuing negotiations with the United States on insurance and reinsurance. I think it's also important that we check that the rules we put in place during the crisis are working as intended. And that's not to question the basic legislative architecture that I believe has made our financial system stronger. But rather, it's to check, to see whether it can be made more growth-friendly and still achieve the same prudential objectives. That's why we launched our call for evidence. We had a great response and we're still working through the evidence that we received. But it's already clear that many businesses feel that we need a more proportionate approach to reporting and governance requirements. They feel that rules could be more sensitive to the size and different business models of insurance companies and that we could do more to encourage insurers to make long-term investments. We'll complete our analysis and come forward with our thinking in the summer. And we'll also use the evidence that you've submitted to sharpen the focus of future reviews of individual pieces of legislation like Solvency II or PRIPS. At the same time as this work, I'm driving forward what we're doing to build a single market for capital, to connect savings more effectively to growth, to channel investment to projects in need of financing, to give companies a greater choice of funding and, of course, to increase the options for people saving for the longer term. I'm very clear that insurers, who after all are Europe's biggest institutional investors, managing some 10 trillion euros of assets, that they have a key role to play in deepening our capital markets. And that's why the very first step we took was to amend Solvency II legislation to support investment by insurers in infrastructure projects. We defined infrastructure as an asset class and reduced capital requirements for this type of investment by nearly a third. This change came into force last month and I hope that it will help you. Some of you have also argued we should extend it to infrastructure corporates and I agree that we should look at that. So we've written to EOPA for their advice, which I expect to have in June. I also want insurers to be part of our plans to restart securitisation markets in Europe by defining simple, transparent and standardised securitisation. Member states agreed to this proposal in record time. I hope that the European Parliament can now take it forward urgently too. Every extra day that this proposal takes to pass into law is one more day of a missed opportunity for growth. As soon as we get closer to a political agreement, we'll amend Solvency II implementing rules so that the changes also apply to insurers. 
Now today I know that you're talking about serving your customer in tomorrow's world. So as part of the Capital Markets Union, I also wanted to look at the financial services from the perspective of the consumer. To do this, we launched a green paper to identify the barriers that exist to the single market. The era of digitalization and innovation that we're now in gives us an opportunity to overcome national boundaries, to give consumers more choice and lower prices, to make it easier for people to take their financial services, services like insurance policies, with them when they move across the EU, and to ensure that you're able to offer your services more easily in other countries, wherever you're based. We had a positive response to that consultation and we're now busy analysing how to take things forward before coming back with our ideas later in the summer. Taken together, I think that these actions make up an ambitious agenda. An agenda to take the single market a step further, to support a competitive insurance sector that puts the customer first, one that's governed by rules that command respect and that supports long-term investment and growth in Europe. I hope that that's an agenda on which we can all agree. I look forward to working with you in the future to deliver it. As for today, I hope you have a very successful conference.